Smile and learn. Hello, friends. Do you know what living beings are and what they have in common? You don't? Well, you can't miss this video to learn what types of living beings exist and what their vital functions are. Living beings can be unicellular organisms, meaning they consist of one single cell. Microorganisms, like bacteria, are unicellular organisms. Living beings can also be multicellular organisms, like trees or birds, that consist of many cells. This means that we consider plants, animals, and microorganisms as living beings. Do you know what these living beings have in common? The vital functions! Despite the differences among them, living beings share a common characteristic. They all carry out the vital functions. The vital functions of living beings are interaction, nutrition, and reproduction. Do they sound familiar? Let's have a closer look at them. The vital function of interaction enables living beings to interact with their surroundings via information or signals they receive. This way, they can respond, act, or react depending on the situation. Fleeing from danger like fire is an example of how animals interact with their surroundings. Human beings interact with one another as well. For example, when someone smiles at us, <laughs> we usually smile back. Or plants, for example, that grow toward the sun and branch their roots toward water. The vital function of nutrition provides living beings with energy and necessary nutrients for survival. To carry out this function, living beings need water, air, and nutrients. The majority of living beings get nutrients from the food they eat. For example, having breakfast gives you the nutrients you need. The function of reproduction enables living beings to ensure survival of the species by giving birth to new living beings. In the animal kingdom, we classify living beings in viviparous animals born from their mother's womb, and oviparous animals that hatch from eggs. Another example would be certain plants whose fruits or seeds fall on the ground and put out shoots for new plants of the same species to grow. Living beings share many interesting things, don't they? Different living beings like microorganisms, plants, or animals share the vital functions. This way, they all interact, stay nourished, and reproduce. Don't miss other videos to keep on learning with us! Hello everyone! Today we're going to learn how we classify living things. First, let's start with a question. Do you remember what all living things have in common? And the answer is that they all fulfill the vital functions. And do you remember what are the vital functions? Here's a hint. There are three. Good job. The vital functions of living things are interaction, nutrition, and reproduction. Well, let's get down to business. There are many ways to classify living things, but the most common way is to group them by kingdoms. There are five kingdoms in total. Animal, plant, fungi, monra, and protista, also called productista. We divide them in this way because the living things in each kingdom have common characteristics 
and they're significantly different from the living things in other kingdoms. Let's take a closer look. The Animal Kingdom. The first kingdom we'll talk about is the animal. There are many, many, many animal species. I'm sure you know a lot of them. But did you know that human beings are also animals? Let's take a look at some characteristics of the animal kingdom. Animals are multicellular. That means that they're made up of more than one cell. Interesting. All animals are heterotrophic, which means that they eat other organisms to get the substances they need to survive. Another important characteristic of the animal kingdom is that almost all of them can move on their own. So, the characteristics of the animal kingdom are the following. They're multicellular, heterotrophic, and most of them can move on their own. The plant kingdom. The plant kingdom is characterized by the fact that all plants, whether they're trees, bushes, or flowers, are autotrophic. That means that they make their own food through a process called photosynthesis. They're also multicellular. Like we said before, it means that they're made up of more than one cell. But unlike animals, plants cannot move on their own. So the characteristics of the plant kingdom are as follows. They're multicellular, autotrophic, and do not move on their own. The Fungi Kingdom The Fungi Kingdom is characterized by unicellular organisms, such as yeasts, or multicellular organisms like mushrooms and mold. This means that they can be made up of one cell or many cells. All fungi are heterotrophic. Do you remember what that means? That's right! Heterotrophic means that they cannot make their own food, so they eat other organisms. The thing that fungi like to eat the most are decomposing mushrooms. Ew! And would you say that they can move on their own? Of course not! Have you ever seen a mushroom walking? To sum up, the characteristics of the fungi kingdom are the following. They can be both unicellular and multicellular. They are heterotrophic and they do not move on their own. The Monra Kingdom. The Monra Kingdom is characterized by the simplest and most primitive forms of life. The Monra Kingdom is made up of unicellular organisms. These organisms are so small that you can only see them with a microscope. Bacteria can either make their own food or take it from the environment where they live. This means that they can be autotrophic and heterotrophic. Now that's a cool fact! Did you know that there are some beneficial bacteria for humans? Like those that make yogurt and others that are harmful that can cause diseases such as salmonella. Let's sum up the characteristics of the Monra Kingdom as the following. They're unicellular organisms. They can be made autotrophic and heterotrophic. And there are some beneficial bacteria and some that can be harmful to humans. The Protista or Productista Kingdom. And finally, we'll talk about the Protista Kingdom, also called the Productista Kingdom, which includes protozoa and algae. 
The organisms in this kingdom can be unicellular, like protozoa, and some types of algae, or multicellular, like many other types of algae. Both types are only visible through a microscope. In this kingdom, we can find heterotrophic beings, like amoeba, that eat other organisms, and also autotrophs, such as algae, that make their own food using photosynthesis. Let's take out our notepad for the last time. The characteristics of the protista kingdom, or protista, are as follows. They can be unicellular and multicellular organisms. And they can also be autotrophic and heterotrophic. Wow, we learned so many things about the kingdoms of living things. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Until next time. Hello, friends. Today, we're going to explore the differences between heterotrophs and autotrophs. Living beings need to carry out three vital functions to survive. Do you remember which ones? That's right! Nutrition, interaction, and reproduction. Today, we're going to find out more about the function of nutrition. Thanks to the function of nutrition, living beings get the energy they need to carry out everyday activities like moving, walking, or even thinking. But where do we get all this energy from? From food! In other words, from what we eat. Based on their mode of nutrition, living beings are classified into two major groups autotrophs and heterotrophs. The word autotroph has a distinct definition. Auto means self, and troph means nourishing. This explains the fact that autotrophic organisms make their own food to get the energy they need for everyday activities. In other words, autotrophic organisms produce their own food Plants are an example of autotrophic organisms because they make their own food and obtain energy during the process of photosynthesis. The word heterotroph also has a distinct definition. Hetero means other, and troph means nourishing. This means that heterotrophic organisms cannot make their own food. They must eat to obtain energy and survive. Animals, including humans, are an example of heterotrophic organisms. They consume food from an outside source to obtain energy for their day-to-day -day activities. As we have seen, there are autotrophic organisms that produce their own food, and heterotrophic organisms that obtain nutrients from other organisms. You've learned how to differentiate them. See you soon! Hey friends! Today we're going to take a super interesting journey inside living beings. First, we'll start with the cell, which is the smallest basic unit that can live on its own. And bit by bit, we'll go through tissues, organs, systems, apparatus, and finally, the organism. The human body is an example of how living beings are organized. Have you ever wondered how our body is organized on the inside? Well, let's get started. The vital functions of a living being are nutrition, interaction, and reproduction. The cell is the smallest basic unit that fulfills the vital functions. We're all made up of millions of cells. Tissues are made up of the same types of cells that carry out the same function. 
There are four tissue types in our body. Connective tissue, epithelial tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. The nerve tissue cells are called neurons. Can you guess what muscle tissue cells are called? Very good! They are called muscle cells. Organs are made up of tissues that work together to carry out the same function. These functions can range from locomotion, which means movement, all the way up to a heartbeat. One example is a muscle, which is made up of muscle tissue. Systems are made up of organs that work in a coordinated manner to perform a function. Do you think our lungs would do us any good if we didn't have the larynx or trachea? Of course not! Each organ has a function, and together they make our body work. For example, the muscular system is made up of muscles. The apparatuses are made up of different organs and systems that carry out a function together. For example, the musculoskeletal system consists of the skeletal system and the muscular system. Isn't it amazing what our body is capable of? And finally, we'll talk about the organism which is made up by the combination of all apparatuses and systems. We are an organism, i.e. we are made up of apparatuses and systems. What a trip we've had! Together we've learned what types of components make up our organism. We started with the cell, then moved through the tissues, organs, systems, apparatuses, and we finished with the organism. I hope you had as much fun as I did on this trip. See you soon! We've learned so much in just one video. Did you know there are many more videos? Imagine how much you could learn. Subscribe to the Smile and Learn educational channel to learn and have fun at the same time.